in the second edition of the Digital Senate Summit and uh, discuss yes. issues around uh, creating a sustainable, scalable, and secure identity for New India. Um, I'm sure uh, the other uh, discussions on the open digital ecosystems that will be held will be extremely useful uh, to everyone. Uh, specifically talking of uh, the issue of identity, uh, Aadhaar over the past decade uh, has become ubiquitous and uh, over 99.8% of the adults uh, in the country have Aadhaar. We have issued uh, nearly 130 crore Aadhaar numbers over the past decade. And now everyone, uh, and especially all adults, have their Aadhaar. And our focus is on ensuring that the 0 to 18 age group also uh, gets their Aadhaar number uh, well in time so that they can use it for uh, wherever they would like to uh, make or it's required to uh, do so. Uh, this uh, Aadhaar, this digital identity has uh, replace the multitude of identities which people had to carry earlier, whether it was a driving license or a PAN card or uh, any other form of identity issued by the employer, etc. And this uh, single identity is now accepted universally everywhere. And what is more unique about it is that it is authenticable or ver verifiable anywhere. Our uh, vision is to ensure that you can authenticate or verify it anytime, anywhere, uh, 24 by 7, 365 days a year, and even in the most remote of locations where connectivity might also be a problem. So apart from the online uh, connectivity or the online verification uh, ver mechanisms that we have, we also have the offline uh, methods by which uh, if you someone presents their Aadhaar card, the Aadhaar card has an encrypted uh, QR code, uh, which can be uh, verified using a mobile phone. And it doesn't need internet connectivity. All it needs is a local telecom uh, connectivity is all that is required, and it can be verified. Uh, and um, uh, this authentication anywhere, anytime, uh, ensures that people don't have to carry anything along with them. Uh, the biometrics that they have, the fingerprints or the iris or the face, uh, that can be used to authenticate them so that it obviates the need for carrying various kinds of cards, et cetera, along with them. Uh, this identity has also become the financial address so that uh, once linked to the bank accounts, uh, funds can be transferred directly to them. And during COVID, uh, this was especially useful uh, since uh, the government could transfer various benefits uh, to the people, including benefits to farmers under PM Kisan, uh, benefits to uh, laborers uh, from for the uh, keeping in view the Ishram, uh, which is currently being expanded, and a host of other uh, programs and schemes of uh, funds could be given. And the fact that uh, the public distribution system, the ration card, uh, became uh, one ration for the entire nation, uh, one could access ration cards or rations uh, from any uh, PDA shop across the country. Uh, along with this uh, use, which is across the country, our attempt has also been to make it more contactless. Uh, since, for example, uh, if one goes to a ration shop, one has to use the fingerprint. And given the issues of uh, uh, infection during COVID, contactless uh, technologies. We already have the iris, uh, which can be read from a distance of 10 to 15 centimeters. And we've also enabled uh, the face, uh, which can also be authenticated in a limited manner. We have, expand, uh, we have enabled it and we are expanding that so that people don't even have to uh, use any touch mechanism uh, to verify. Uh, apart from this, uh, the Bhim Aadhaar Pay, uh, which enables uh, people to be able to transfer apart from the Aadhaar Payment Bridge, which is there. And even for updations, uh, which is a very common requirement of uh, people, uh, apart from the portal that we have, which can be accessed through any computer or laptop or any citizen service center, uh, which exists nearly 4.2 lakh of them across the country, 
uh, even the uh, mobile phone through the app that we have, the M Aadhaar app, updations can be done. All in the objective to ensure that how it can be done in a seamless manner, contactless manner, and in a manner most convenient uh, to uh, citizens. There's even been the request uh, for people to have more and more services at the doorstep. And that is why we are onboarding uh, the 1.5 lakh postmen into the Aadhaar ecosystem. So a lot of the services which people had to go to various places can now be done uh, through the local postmen and which are there in every city, town, and uh, village. Uh, the citizen service centers, as I mentioned earlier, are another mechanism which will ensure that the Aadhaar updation enrollment and the ecosystem is available closer to the people uh, wherever they are located. Uh, our efforts continue to looking at uh, the Divyang people and other vulnerable uh, uh, sections of the society on how to uh, reach out to them and ensure that all of them have their Aadhaar cards. Um, even uh, the architecture that we have uh, developed under Aadhaar, uh, people outside the country are also uh, keen uh, to uh, look at it, to see how they can adopt it. And we are also looking at issues of identity standards, which can be used across the world. And the fact that we use open source uh, technologies as far as possible, uh, that helps uh, and I'm sure will help other countries also to take it up uh, at, the, uh, at the fastest and in the most appropriate manner uh, for them. Um, there are a number of new technologies uh, that are on the horizon. Uh, for example, um, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, AIML, we are already uh, utilizing uh, to some extent uh, in terms of document checking in for screening and updating uh, uh, whenever there's updations going on. So we use, uh, for quality checking, we have started using AI ML. Uh, similarly, to detect fingerprint liveness, uh, we are using these techniques to ensure that uh, frauds are limited. And similarly, in face authentication also, we are using AI ML techniques to ensure that uh, uh, the, uh, the matching of the uh, features is done uh, very, very uh, effectively. Uh, blockchain is another technology which is of course on the horizon uh, and let us see uh, we are of course we have teams uh, and we have partnership with institutions uh, and we hope to see how we can leverage such technologies uh, going forward and ensuring that uh, the information security the confidentiality and the cyber security of the systems that we have how it can be strengthened uh, using many of these techniques one of the basic features of Aadhaar is the issue of trust uh, that, we, uh, uh, that we always strive to ensure and ensure that uh, the privacy and the security, uh, which are extremely key, remain prime in our ecosystem also. So uh, we have, of course, privacy by design and built in into our architecture in terms of Aadhaar being a random number, we are purpose blind or use blind. And uh, we have a minimalistic uh, information of the residents that we keep in our data sets. Uh, we have restrictions on the sharing of the biometric data that we have, the core biometric data. And of course, all our ecosystem partners have to follow certain protocols and procedures so that uh, uh, there is no breach of any confidentiality or the privacy of any individual. Cybersecurity is something that we keep uh, at the topmost. We have a system of uh, multiple uh, firewalls. Uh, we uh, use these multi-layers uh, architecture and uh, various certifications we follow, which are to ISO standards, to ensure that globally we are among the best uh, in that area. Uh, we also ensure that better security so that only identified partners uh, are in touch with our systems. And we have the registered devices, uh, which ensure that uh, no uh, device which has probably been hacked or is under a stress uh, um, uh, has any contact with our eco ecosystem. Um, so uh, this is in effect uh, the areas uh, that we are now hoping that others would leverage 
the digital public infrastructure that the country has built, which is unparalleled. No other country has this uh, infrastructure uh, with the ability to verify anyone online, offline, 24 by seven and uh, across uh, uh, any, uh, any, 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 any uh, area uh, that, that they are uh, uh, living in. So, uh, and this is what we are uh, hoping to leverage uh, both internally and externally. Internally, we are in touch with other government agencies, state governments. There are more than uh, 800 programs of the government, central and the state governments, which are using the identity to enable a deduplication and ensure that uh, uh, that no ghost identities are there, no duplicates are there, and to ensure much more effective and faster implementation of the programs. Uh, similarly, in the FinTech Center, a number of regulated entities regulated by RBI, SEBI, uh, IRDA, or uh, the uh, PFRDA, the pensions regulator, all of them are using, uh, uh, many of them are using these, and we hope to expand uh, their usage with the objective on how to ensure ease of living for the resident, which is our focus, that this digital infrastructure should help in the ease of living for the residents of the country. Of course, within the overall guidelines and the framework that has been set out under the Aadhaar Act and that has been set out by the Supreme Court. The interest that we have received from countries for this ease of living is extremely heartening. We have been had uh, video discussions uh, with, uh, with many countries in the developing world. We have also in touch with the multilateral organizations uh, to see how uh, they can utilize the information and the learnings that India has uh, uh, for uh, improving uh, uh, impact and implementation of their programs. In fact, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which mandate certain minimum uh, standards and some minimum services and, and uh, levels to reach by the year 2030, has identified uh, a legal identity for all as one of the sustainable development goals of the SDGs uh, to be as achieved by 2030. Of course, India has achieved it much more, much earlier and we are already a universal legal identity, uh, but the fact that the United Nations SDG also reiterate this also will enable that uh, in the years to come, more and more countries would be looking at how to uh, develop a legal identity. And given the learnings from India, that is something that we are reaching out to. There are various organizations in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America, uh, who are looking at it. And some of our neighboring countries are also have reached out and we are working with them. Uh, this uh, uh, digital identity, uh, once it is across nations, it uh, will enable a lot more uh, methods by it can be leveraged to ensure uh, that services, benefits, and subsidies uh, can reach uh, people much more effectively. So once again, uh, thank you for inviting me. And I do hope that uh, the partners who are there today who are hearing this, they would uh, look at it on how we can improve our Aadhaar ecosystem much more effectively and how it can be leveraged to enable ease of living for the residents uh, within the frameworks that have been set out. Thank you. Thank you so much.